as a last component of our uh, conversation on infrastructure, well, we've covered actual product ad um, offering adaption, uh, basic processing and reconciliation, I mean, getting the money as quickly as possible, which is the whole point of payments. And we've talked about ecosystem actually playing a role in infrastructure. We also need to talk about one of the most critical parts, which is security. And in particular, the conversation around tokenization and encryption. So I would like to invite to stage Kurt Schmidt from Nexetera, who will walk us through what security and tokenization actually looks like for PSPs in 2019. Sir? Thank you, Kayla. Thank you. So it's my pleasure to be here. Um, before starting my presentation, uh, a question, who in the audience here have heard about secure remote commerce? Hands up, please. A few, okay. So then for the rest, I'll try to squeeze in these 15 minutes everything you need to know. And uh, before doing so, I'd like to ask you a few questions. So um, who had already some fraud on, on, on the card? Please hands up. Yeah, it is, I usually ask this question, it is around 30, 40%. Um, so it's a quite significant number where you experience fraud. The next question is, I think there is no one in the room that likes this. Uh, at every shop to enter uh, all card data over, over and over and over again. So I don't ask this question, but I would like to ask the question to you as well. Where, do you know where your uh, card data and your, your card information is stored? At which merchants, at which PSBs? Uh, do you feel you have a good knowledge about this? So please, uh, hands up if you feel you know all these places. Okay. So it's little knowledge about this, and this is one of the problems um, in, in the security. So let me uh, explain the different types of e-commerce checkouts. So the majority of e-commerce checkouts is, is card-based, and uh, out of this, it is a card on file. So at the merchant or at the PSP, the, the card data is stored and then can be used for uh, a subsequent checkout. In 19% of these situations, uh, you need to enter your card data again, and you do a so-called guest checkout. And then in 13% of these cases, your card data is stored in some digital wallet, uh, Visa checkout, MasterPass, to name a few, um, and you're then authenticated to these wallets in order to do this checkout. Um, rest is direct transfer, other methods, so the majority of these card-based checkouts, uh, we need to look at into, in, and tackle this. Um, we all know that uh, e-commerce um, checkouts and e-commerce uh, is, is growing um, uh, uh, drastically, and we need to improve this situation in order to make it easier and more secure for the customer. A a particular problem is if you do a checkout from a mobile device, and then it's really cumbersome on a, on a small uh, keyboard to enter all this data. Uh, so this, there is a strong need in, for this mobile commerce and in-app payment, and this needs to be addressed as well. So what are the concerns and challenges? There are two sides of concerns for sure. The consumer has the concern as well. He wants to, to, to do a checkout and to pay. But let's look at our industry. It is the issuer. He uh, uh, loses uh, transactional uh, revenue because the checkout is not successful. For the merchant, it's even harder. He loses the complete sale of the product. Um, Okay, and these abandonment rates today are in a significant range, they are 24%. When 3DS, uh, the existing 3DS 1.0 is used, I think it will improve with a 2.0 standard and frictionless flows, etc. But it's a quite significant number. It's also when 3DS is not used, there is a 17% decline rate. So a significant uh, number uh, also is not working and is, is declined. Uh, and then we have the risk uh, and, and, and the fraud. And this risk and fraud is, 
uh, 10 times higher, around 10 times higher. It's not working. Can someone please? Okay. So it's significantly higher with card not present compared to card present. So if you are in the shop and you do a, a, a transaction in the terminal, contactless or uh, with, uh, with chip, uh, you have a better security uh, because there is um, uh, uh, EMV, uh, EMV security on, based on cryptograms. If you have a card not present transaction, everything is, is, is basically relying on the security of 3DS. And uh, you don't have the, 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 the same level of securities, therefore a much higher uh, fraud rate. And for sure, issue concern is um, cost of customer care. And for the merchant, it's the higher transactional cost because out of the risk, card not present transactions are more expensive than card present transactions. So, how to solve this? Let's uh, look to this. So, on for this card on file, the, one of the uh, ways forward is to replace the, the PAN with a token uh, and to uh, have a better security by this. And then, in the second step, to improve the security to a card present-like security. In, in the uh, card on guest checkout, it is pretty similar. It's the same as, as above. Plus, we need to have a better usability for the consumer. And I'm coming to this later. I want to focus now to these uh, points to how tokenization can help and how the EMV co security uh, can help on uh, this e-commerce situation. So, when we look into tokenization, we know uh, tokenization from um, uh, OEM pays and from, from issuer pays. There is a token service provider, typically now done by the schemes. Uh, they have token systems uh, like MDES or VTS and connected to the card issuer on one side and connected to a token requester on the other side. And you can replace a ban against the token and then use this token for uh, subsequent uh, payments. It is better in terms of security. You are not falling into PCI scope. Um, and this funding PAN that is replaced is then either replaced by device PAN or by a merchant PAN. And uh, we, many of us is using this daily when we do mobile contactless payment, either with issuer apps uh, or with uh, smartwatches or with the OEM pays like Apple Pay and Google Pay. This is the technology behind this. Uh, that is uh, uh, known in the market and this tokenization for these use cases is quite nicely working. So, for cloud-based payment, a, an app of a banking app can be uh, a, a, a accompanied with, a, with an, uh, a module that is delivering all this contactless, mobile contactless functionality and is requesting these tokens and then a transaction is sent via PSP acquirer to the scheme to detokenize it and then to the card issuer to, to authorize it. So this is existing technology. So the idea is why not using this same existing technology also for e-commerce um, situations and then do the tokenization for card on file. And the schemes are supporting this, and there's an, um, the, the, the initial customers on this and the initial use case is Netflix. So Netflix today has a token to do a payment, and uh, the schemes have systems like MasterCard is, is naming their system MasterCard for, for merchants, M is for merchants, M4M, uh, and, and Visa is has, uh, also supporting on VTS this e-commerce tokenization. So the basic idea is the merchant does not store the PAN, but the token, and the security is uh, based on the cryptogram. And this is working like this, a pretty similar picture. Either consumer enters the PAN uh, on the e-commerce on the e uh, side, or you convert the existing stored card on file, and then you request this uh, via the scheme token service and via approval from the issuer, and you get back a token. And what's new now is that once you do a transaction, you generate the cryptogram that provides the EMV-like uh, uh, card present security, 
And th with this cryptogram, then you send this uh, transaction for approval um, to, the, to, the, to the network and uh, do the usual things. So the four main use cases of this merchant tokenization is you enroll, you, you enter your card detail either or from card on file and you tokenize this. Then a big advantage is you will see the real card art because connected to the scheme tokenization services and then connected to the issuer. You get the real card art displayed. You see, you, in a checkout situation, you see really your card. Then you do the transaction, um, you do the, the payment. And another very important uh, benefit is that you get also the life cycle supported. So when the expiry of the, of the card is uh, coming to an end of, end of life, there is functionality that uh, for the existing token, you can new, uh, uh, assign a new funding plan to this existing token. And there's a lot of benefits, a lot of less hassle for the merchant because the card is not expired and will be automatically continued. So all this life cycle management, I think, is also a, a great benefit to get. So, and then we have, um, this is the tokenization, does a lot of, 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 of work for our challenges. And then we have the, the situation, how to improve the usability for the consumer. So the situation uh, as of today is, please help me on this. Can you please, okay. Um, Typically, it's maybe a bit exaggerated. You see a lot of checkout options, and this is really confusing uh, for the customer. So um, it's also that each checkout method is somehow some inconsistent ways to do this. So it's really hard for the consumer to find in this variety of, of options a right way. Then, as mentioned, especially on mobile devices, entering all this data uh, is a nightmare. Uh, it's really cumbersome. And then, in some of these checkout situations, like, for example, if you go to the wallet checkouts of MasterPass and you're not rolled up, uh, uh, um, then uh, signed up, then you, instead of doing the checkout and instead of paying, you are asked to, to onboard the, the, the wallet now. It's also a pain because I want to shop now and get the good and not do a complete onboarding step, etc. So it's, it's, it's really hard and then we have all these out-of-band problems of, of, of uh, uh, SMS and OTP situation, etc. So it's really hard for the consumer. And the idea is now to replace all these buttons with one button and this is the button uh, that is currently not defined. It will be defined in the, I would say, in the next three to four months. EMV Co. has a working group how this button will look like. But let's say it's this SSC button and it is agnostic for all schemes, supports um, all uh, payment methods and, and, and schemes. So here is only three, but for sure it supports JCP, Union Pay, etc. as well. And then connected to the, to the tokenization systems of the, of the schemes and they are connected to the issuer. And 3DS 2.0 is uh, the vital element as well in this um, uh, SSC system to get the right level of security for the checkout. So you can read specifications. There is a 0 0.9 specification. It's a bit boring to read. I think 350 pages, very technical. But uh, nevertheless, the idea is to have this consistent user experience, scheme neutral, and there will be one button for a checkout situation um, that is, uh, offers uh, some advantages. The advantages is that once you have done a previous checkout, your card or your token will be magically found and you will be recognized by either some device or user recognition. There's some binding methods. So on the, on the same device, uh, you don't need to enter the data again. It is then recognized that you're coming back on this device. Then there, there is the onboarding of an um, issue app. So from an issue app, you can say on this device, I want to do an e-commerce checkout and then you're kind of pre-registered. 
uh, and uh, is very very convenient. So in an in an in an issuer banking application where you already authenticated and know which payment cards you have, you just enable one button and say, with this card, I want to enable uh, that I can pay on my device, um, uh, and this, uh, you don't need to enroll by this. Um, I mentioned it's working for all schemes, uh, tokenization. I mentioned EMV like security. And 3DS 2.0 is a, a vital uh, element in this uh, SSE framework. So with this element of, of uh, 3DS tokenization and SSC, the e-commerce situation should improve uh, drastically. Uh, to give you an example how this would look like, this is a flow that has on these four, on, on, on four pages here, of, uh, it's uh, the merchant application. So just in the middle there is this secure checkout where you have one button in the, in the flow where you're a returning user and makes the checkout really completely simple. In a first time flow, there is more to do. So there you have the, the merchant side and the e-commerce side on, on, on left and right. And in the middle, you uh, enter the, 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 the card data. But then this card data is stored and can be used um, for these uh, subsequent checkout flows. And SSC is, um, defines some new roles in the specification. You will find uh, five roles. It is what is called the digital shopping application. This is what is the merchant, uh, either a web page or a merchant app. Then it is a role that is called SSC initiator that is basic, basically gathering all the information of all your payment credentials from all schemes. Then it's the digital card facilitator that is managing your payment cards and displaying them and displaying the, the artwork for this. Then the so-called SSC system. This is typically the roles the schemes will play. In the specifications, you will never see that this is uh, the schemes, but implicitly it is. And then you have the issuer, the uh, SSC participating issuer, uh, that is supporting this process. And then, not in the, in, the, in the SSC definition, there is for sure the role on the PSP, which is more on the SSC uh, initiator side, and the role on the token requester, and the role on the token service provider. So these are the roles that would then fit to the complete picture how uh, this uh, SSC system would work. So. What to do next if you're interested as a merchant or PSB? Uh, we offer insights to this. Uh, we uh, do offer training courses, have demonstrators for this. Um, we look into this. And um, our experience is based that we are a leading provider in this digital payment area, market leader in uh, 3DS and, and digital payments. We are technically associated in EMV Co, so we contribute to the SSC standard and comment this. And uh, finally, we are connected with um, key players, issuers, PSP in the market. If you're interested also being connected and speak about this, please feel free to contact me. Also, uh, uh, put me to your LinkedIn profile, send me an invite. Happy to respond and to uh, look into this topic with you. Many thanks. Thank you.